Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. And today we're going to talk about Tennessee Valley Indians, or TVI, which used to be a major problem for hams back during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. The problem was that whenever hams transmitted, they would just kind of wipe out the television signals all around. And this was very common. Now, this is why there is a section in the Part 97, the rule, FCC rules for amateur radio. There is this thing called quiet hours where it's kind of a compromise between, okay, I'm legal to transmit and my radio meets all requirements to other people's right to watch TV. It's a balance. So they can impose quiet hours on you if your neighbors complain that your operation of your station is ruining their TV reception and so on. Now, the question here is from Patrick Hutton, KG5VKV. He has got a problem. When the radio transmit, the TV loses signal and the screen goes blank. It seems to happen on all frequencies and all watts. It wasn't very noticeable or troublesome until I started doing digital FT8 and 20 watts. Now, the thing is about an FT8 transmission, it's about 13 seconds long at the full power of the transmitter, whatever you've got it set it to. He's got it set at 20 watts, which is good. FT8's supposed to be a weak signal mode. So there's a couple things you can do. You can drop that power to 5 watts and see what happens. Okay, if that helps. My little whisper transmitter right here, this is a Zactec whisper transmitter, and it goes out to my... I've got a gazebo NFED half wave out there that covers 80 through 10 meters, and so that thing just cycles between the frequencies at a grand total of one-fifth of a watt, 200 milliwatts. And it gets received all over the world, so it is possible to cut power and see if that would be a problem. Now, he says he's put a low-pass TVI filter on both ends of his coax. If that is not grounded, it's not going to do that much for you, okay? Because all of the filters in there, the filter's unbalanced. It works against ground. And so you need to make sure that that TVI filter on your transmitter end is attached firmly to your station grounding. You do have a ground rod, right? And all of that kind of stuff. That TVI filter needs to have a pretty firm attachment to the ground in your station. In a recent video, I just showed what all that looks like in my station. So, And I still have some work to do. I've got a to-do list to make that better. Do we get lightning here? Yes, we do. Uh, it's summertime. We get thunderstorms. Most of our summer rain comes in the form of thunderstorms, at least until the monsoon season, which will be August, September. And then we get lots of thunderstorms and lots of lightning. Now, he has obtained an MFJ702B low-pass TVI filter and not seen any improvements. Again, near the antenna, if you've got a metal mast, make sure that's grounded to the metal mast and that the metal mast is grounded. And then at your station end, make sure that the TVI filter is grounded also. The question, what can I do to eliminate the issue? Well, it all depends. The hardest problem to solve is on the TV side, and it's called fundamental overload. Now, I'm, I'm assuming you're using your TV with an external antenna. I think I remember reading that. What happens is television tuners are made with the idea that there's not going to be a real high signal level of any kind of signal around them. Okay, and that's true for most televisions. But if you live near, say, the antenna for an AM or FM broadcast, you've got a lot of power, and that little tuner in there may not be able to reject it. Now, the picture in your television is sent FM, if you're talking old-fashioned television. If you're talking digital television, it's at frequencies where it's got to receive a signal, Okay, and if there's a real strong signal, you know you've got this filter, but it's got edges on it. And if it's loud enough, it'll come in and swamp the front end of your receiver. This is much less common with cable and much less common with satellite. 
Okay, now if you've got a satellite dish outside, ground it. Okay, same thing. The reflector on that is grounded. And you can ground that right to a ground rod right beneath it. Of course, you've got to put in all your bonding to the other ground rods and so on. But that can happen. Now, one thing that you can do if you're certain with your low-pass filters, which usually cut off around 30 to 40 megahertz, okay, well below the TV band, which starts about 60 megahertz, okay, you can put a high-pass filter on the television going into the television set. You can put a high pass filter there. Again, it should be grounded. You can ground it to your third wire ground or something like that, or send a wire outside to take it to the ground rod, whatever it may need. Now note that television waves are short. Anywhere from five or six meters, there's a big break in the broadcast television bands that allows the ham radio two meter band, all the public service frequencies and so on. So there's a big gap in between some of those. Now, if you're, if you're having this problem on cable, ground the cable box or have your cable provider come and ground the cable box because you don't want stuff getting into uh, those cables and causing fundamental overload in the tuner. Now, usually on set-top boxes for cable, television is tuned to a particular channel on the old way of doing things, channel three or four. Now, if it's HDMI, it talks to it via an HDMI cable. Usually HDMI cables are shielded. If they are not, go get one that's shielded, okay? HDMI cables are artificially expensive because there's a licensing fee that needs to be paid for the HDMI connector. That's why they're so doggone expensive. If you get it from Amazon, you go to Amazon Basics, they have an HDMI cable in there that's a lot less expensive. So you want a high pass filter there. So you got a low pass filter in the ham side, a high pass filter on the TV side. Hopefully the twain shall never meet. Okay. Watch to make sure that your cabling from your ham station does not run adjacent to the cabling for the television. Now, like in our cases, my ham cabling all comes together right out here, but it's way over on the other side of the house where we have our satellite dish. Okay, now I do have a couple of antennas over there, but we've never had any trouble with RFI on those. I remember one time I was doing CW or something, and my wife came up and says, I'm trying to watch a TV show. And we know how that works. Rather than tell her that her television is supposed to accept any interference it gets, I said, yes, dear, <laughs> and immediately ceased until that was solved. It was only that one time I've ever had that problem. So separation of the devices, high pass filter and the input to the TV, and wherever your cable enters the house. Now, the cables are a little weird because they will also have a DC voltage across them that actually feeds the receiver in the satellite dish. There are HD TV antennas, which are active antennas, meaning they need a power source. So your high pass filter has to be able to pass DC. You should be able to find these filters anywhere your TV accessories are sold. Home Depot has a whole array of them and so on. So. I hope that answers your question about what you can do about the TVI that have historically been called the Tennessee Valley Indians for instead of Tango Victor India. If you go back into old, old, old copies of QST, you'll see that phrase TVI or Tennessee Valley Indians quite common. I used to have back in the 70s on my Heath kit. HW16, a low pass filter, collect things below 30 megahertz. And it seemed to solve the problem because my mother would get interference from me on her AM radio. Now we're going the other direction, okay? And there was a program she liked to listen to on that. And so that was my quiet hours that I had to take care of. Now, the older transmitters are not anywhere near as good as modern transmitters for keeping the harmonics under control. Every time you have an oscillator, which all your radios do, there will be harmonic outputs of the oscillator because no oscillator is perfect. 
you have to have something that will suppress the harmonics. So that's what the output filters are for. And the old pie filters on the, the older equipment and the newer equipment has output filters built right around the 50 ohm point. So I hope that gives you some ideas on what to do with your problem there. Try a few things out. I would immediately check for cables that are adjacent to each other, keep the TV apart, make sure that it's plugged in on a different breaker than what your ham radio stuff is plugged in on. All of those kinds of things in the high pass filter can really help. Otherwise, you're going to have to, you know, very quietly check with your neighbors to see if they're having a problem. One of the best things I can do to show a neighbor if they have a problem, come down and look at my TV. I don't have a problem, you know, and this kind of thing. Technically, they're responsible for buying their own high pass filters, but sometimes it's worth keeping the peace with the neighbors. You buy them the high pass filter. There you go. There's a bunch of answers to a simple question. And until we next meet, 73.